Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another video. I'm going to do a Dutch pour, and I'm going to be doing a Dutch pour using some beautiful bright pinks, purple, uh, silver, some interference violet, which is going to give it a beautiful shifting quality. And I will show you the brands that I'm using. I'm going to tape up my canvas first and um, put my push pins in. I'm sticking with push pins from here on out. There's just nothing more easier than a push pin to use. They're very cheap. You pop them in, you flip your canvas over, you're done. Um, I've tried the paint levelers, the canvas levelers, the stands. Nothing is as convenient and as cheap as using a good old fashioned push pin. So that's what I stick with. Just so you know, this is a 16 by 20 paint pouring canvas. And what they have are a, is a thick piece of chipboard in the back of it to help support the canvas. These are great for beginners too, especially if you're struggling with your design. Michaels and Hobby Lobby sells them. I really enjoy using them, to be honest with you. The only problem I have is you can't find them all of the time. So what I did was I painted all my sides and then I came up onto the canvas, the outer edge, and painted that as well too. That's another way to keep your design on the canvas is by adding some paint on the outer areas. It creates tooth for the paint to grab onto and therefore your design won't move as much as if it were bare. Black is going to be the Oxide Black from Amsterdam. Then I have here, Pebio's Violet, Iridescent Violet Blue. I have Metallic Purple. I have a combination 50-50 mix, which means I combined about a tablespoon each of both of these colors, which are pearl and silver to create a kind of sterling silver. And then what I did was after I put those paints in the cup, I added my Floetrol and my water. Now, all the paints are mixed with American Floetrol and water. For those that are new and watching for the first time, what I will do is put a mixing video in the description for you. Here are the consistency of my paints. And again, they are all mixed the same. So approximately two tablespoons of paint, four tablespoons of Floetrol, and water until it flows off of the stick, just like this. So that's the silver I have. Then I'm using a couple of Holbein paint colors, which are the Luminous Rose and Luminous Violet. And... Amsterdam's Conacredone Rose. So those are my paint colors. I'm going to take my black paint that is mixed exactly the same as all of my colored paint. And I'm going to, now this is how I do it. And I believe this way will be easier for, be, for beginners also. Because when you are new at this and you're using a spatula or something to spread the paint, you can't really tell how much paint you're leaving on the canvas. If you do it this way, you know how much paint is on the canvas because you're just going to tilt this around and you're going to cover your entire canvas with this paint. And once you have covered the entire surface and you're going over the edges, you're going to keep tilting. And once the edges themselves it starts to, to drip slowly off the edges. Then you know you have enough on that surface, okay? Another way to know that you have enough paint on the canvas is when you tilt and you're covering the surface, if it's taking a long time to get to the corners, you know that's a good amount. If it doesn't go to the corners, just add a little more paint. Now you just want to go around, check your edges, make sure they're fully covered. And then we're gonna put our colors down. Now, when it comes to color, you wanna make sure 
that you think about this because you got to kind of envision your Dutch pour. Do you want pink leaves with a purple border around them? Do you want a white border around them? The first color you put down on the canvas is going to be the color that surrounds the, the petals that you blow out. So for me, I'm thinking I want to have that um, luminous violet that I mixed up be that color. So first, before I put them down though, I need to pop any air bubbles. This is just a culinary torch that you could pick up on Amazon. So there we go. We got that torch nicely. And you gotta think about your design. Which way do you want it to go? I want a nice florally thing just going up the center, maybe a little bit over here. So I'm going to start again, like I said, with that luminous violet, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. So I transferred most of my paints into my bottles. I ran out of my good Lily Vefi bottles, so I'm using these little tiny ones. That's all I had, but those Lily Vefi bottles are the best for doing the Dutch pour. Um, I like using those. So what we're going to do here now, I'm designing this the way that I want it to be hung. However, you're seeing it sideways because it's just easier for me to, to create it this way. However, again, the owner can decide to hang it whichever way they want because these types of paintings can really go upside down, right side. Oh, uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> hang it however you want it. All right. So here we go. First color I'm going to put down is going to be that beautiful luminous violet. And we're going to go like this. Okay. And then we are going to go like this just like that and that's the pattern we are going to follow I put a little bit of a little much of that color there but you know what I actually like this color a lot so it's gonna make it a little bit wider and use less of the other colors now that is a vibrant color all right, so next I'm going to use some of the metallic purple. See how nice you can get your lines when you have those bottles? Then I'm going to come in with, you always want to place like an interference color and a metallic in between your regular colors that you're using because they'll perform the best that way. The, the interference will look the best on top of a dark color. So I'm gonna put this right on there and that purple. And the silver doesn't matter where it lands as long as it's somewhere caked in between. So let me use my stick for this since I do not have a bottle. And why you want that in between? You want it to mix in with the other colors. It will create some cells for you. Colors such as silver or gold a lot of time are made with a different type of base. It must contain some type of an oil or something in it because when you add those colors into your painting, they always help promote cells. So here I'm just adding in the rest of the colors and then we're going to blow it out. Again, 
the reason we pop the air bubbles is that so that they don't pop during the curing phase because if they do if you miss them and they pop they expose little specks of color and it's not very pleasing to the eye so you just want to make sure you don't have any air bubbles and if you're wondering if you can use a heat gun to pop them or a blow dryer the answer is no it needs to be flame when you're dealing with acrylic paint resin yes that you can all right so here we go i'm using flow i'm going to hold her upside down like this and i'm going to aim the air at the surface of the paint not blow down into it and try to move it you gotta go on an angle here okay so here we go Okay, and now instead of struggling to get to this side because I have my tripod set up on this side, I could try to go backwards like this, but that's where mistakes get made. So what I'll do is I'll turn the whole piece around. Very carefully. You know, for us that are recording, it's not as easy to do this as it is for, you know, me just to do a painting on my own at home. So we have to think about all of these things. But I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes simple things like just turn the canvas around do not occur to me <laughs> until the painting's ruined. So this is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I can't wait to show you. I'm going to put the blow dryer on high because I don't feel like it's going to be powerful enough to push it where I need to push it. But with that being said, you have to be careful. You have to hold the blow dryer further back from the canvas and slowly approach. And when you start, start seeing the paint move, that's the right distance, okay? I didn't have quite enough paint in that bottom portion, so I'm just adding a little more and going to try to blow it out. Once I started moving the paint, I knew right away that the color was going to be off and I would have to scrape this part of the canvas, but it's no big deal. We'll get it taken care of. I do not like that. So what I'm going to do is literally scrape this half of the canvas. Yes, I am. You get there eventually, folks. You really do. Just gonna scrape where the color is here. 
Well, against some beautiful cells doing that, though. I'll tell you that. And then I'm going to put some black paint back in there again. So did you see the way I was able to use the blow dryer to push the paint and level it out where the Dutch pour is still on the canvas, that pink area? You can definitely use a blow dryer to spread the paint out and to make it flat. So here I'm going to add my colors again, just like I did when I first put them down. And I'm going to re-blow out this section. If you blow out your paint and you're not happy with some of the design, do not settle for it. Just scrape it off just as I did and try again. So two things here now. I have to use the blow dryer to blend where that new line is into the old portion of the Dutch pour. And then you're also going to notice after I blow out this extension here, then I come back with the blow dryer and I hold it at different angles to shape the Dutch pour. So I'm aiming the air at the black paint to help move it and shape the design of the Dutch pour. You're going to see me do it right here. I'm going to come from the side and just blow that black paint in a little towards the pink. And again, on the right side, I'm going to come down with the blow dryer aimed sideways and blow that black paint in towards the pink. That is much better. Alrighty, so make sure you scrape your drips when you're done and you check your sides. All that good stuff. But this is really, really pretty. I'm going to show it to you with the flash on so you can see the actual colors. It's very, very bright. Very vibrant. I'm not seeing much of that interference violet. I had hoped to see more of it, but again, there's plenty of shimmer in this. So now I'm going to get out my Win Modern Art Lux Powder, and I'm going to sprinkle some on the surface. And what's special about this stuff is that you can see it mixed into your paint. So you can either sprinkle it on top like I'm going to do or actually mix it right into your paint. I did a video, uh, this is a set of angel wings that I did a few weeks ago. And I showed an example of how it looks just sprinkled on top and how it looks mixed into your paint. Typically when you use any type of a glitter product, it will sink into the paint and you won't see it. Um, this stuff, however, does not, it's so fine. And so what I'm going to do is just sprinkle some in the back and talk about holographic effect. It's just really amazing. This one is called flare. Again, all these products are in the description with coupons. Well, not all of them, some of them, this one does have a coupon. So I'm just going to take some out of the bag and I'm going to sprinkle it with my fingers very lightly in the black areas and we're going to let it dry. Also, when this painting is done, if I want to add a little bit more, I can into the resin or even to the surface. I could just hand paint it in. Even though the glitter looks a little splotchy on camera, 
when it's done, you're going to see it creates a beautiful galaxy background effect. So here she is. I absolutely love it. The glitter is so pretty. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Also, don't forget to like the video on your way out. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I have many uh, beginner's tutorials. I have some really great ones underneath the Back to Basics playlist. So if you're struggling, check that out. I'll show you this inside too in a second. I just want to check it out out here. Okay, here we are inside. Please excuse the glare. Black is horrible to film on, especially when there's resin on it. But this galaxy-themed Dutch pour is just really, really pretty. It reminds me of a hot pink bursting nebula, and the glitter are the stars twinkling around it. It's just really, really pretty. And you can see a lot of that... Uh, blue violet from Pebeo lighting up in there. It's a gorgeous piece. And if you're interested, just shoot me an email, artbytammy at yahoo.com. It is a 16 by 20. A few things before you leave. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Don't forget to check out the description. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And for those of you that have been with me or those that are new, I have a very special moment to share with you right now. I've been waiting a very long time to show you this. So without further ado, here we go. Well, my friends, I would love to share a happy moment with you. Today is a very special day for me, and I wanted to include all of you in it. So, I got a very special present from YouTube today. It has been a lot of hard work and a lot of failures, some successes, but it is finally here. And I wanted to show all of you who have channels or who have watched me for many years what you get when you hit 100,000 subscribers. And yes, I have gloves on. <laughs> all righty. You ready? Ta da! Let's see first what they sent me. Congratulations on your subscriber milestone. We are honored to take part in recognizing your achievement and want your experience to be exceptional. This award was inspected and packaged with great care by Rick. And it just says something about damages, which there are none as far as I can see. I got a nice letter. Do you remember your first subscriber? Your 100th or your 1,000th? And we know that you definitely remember your 100,000th subscriber. Now, I don't know who that was because sadly when people subscribe to YouTube, it doesn't pop up on the screen or tell you anything like that. And it doesn't have them in order when you look at them. So... 
Your fans may have found you while searching YouTube, learned about you through a friend, or maybe you showed up as a recommended video. No matter how they came to your channel, fans stayed and their numbers increased because of your unique voice and the excitement of being part of the growing community that you established. We are thrilled to see the development of your community and are proud to honor you or and are proud to honor your impressive milestone of reaching 100,000 subscribers with the Silver Creator Award. Congratulations. Blah, blah, blah. Keep on creating. So let's take a look at this baby, shall we? Woo-wee. Is that not pretty? For those who have pets, never, ever leave these around. You can kill them if they chew on them. So there she is. Presented to Tammy Anderson Art. I'm very excited. Nice felt background. And that, my friends, is what you get when you hit 100,000 subscribers. As I give my thank you speech, the garbage truck is riding by. Leave it to me. You know, I'm all proud about my YouTube moment and a garbage truck is going by my house. Now, if that's not a bad omen, I don't know what is. <laughs> Are they telling me just trash it? Get, get over it. Get on with your life, Tammy. Give up. No, they're not. It's just a garbage truck. I love you all. Thank you all for your, your constant support, your well wishes, your beautiful comments. I look forward to this year and many years to come. I love you, love you, love you, and happy pouring.